Hi everybody, it's Christina from Card Making Magic. This is another video in the Spectrum Noir Colour Class series and this one is using green pens. So these are the greens that are on the um, colour blend chart and these are the pens that we're going to use. Now the three that I'm going to use are these and this is Citrus Green 1, Dark Green 2 and Dark Green Four, and they will give me a lovely blend for my image. Now the image that I'm going to colour is the dragon and it's a digital image, it's not a stamp and it's from the CD, the next big thing from Just Inkline. So let's get started colouring in the dragon with the greens and we're going to look at the image as if the light is just coming straight onto him. So I'm taking the darkest green, dark green 4, DG4, and I'm going to look at where the shadow would be on the body, the body part. So if you look where his leg is over his tail and underneath the tail, that would be in the shade. So I'm just going to add some dark green into that area and I'm just flicking the colour in and around his foot and down the outer edge of the tail. Now we're going to use a process called palette blending. So with your chisel end of your dark green, just put some green onto your mat. You can use a white tile or a glass mat or a craft mat but you need some of the colour down there. Now with the middle colour, DG2, I'm just going to use the, the bullet end and I'm going to pick up some of this colour onto that nib and I'm just going to blend that colour in along that wet edge. And I'm going to work my way down the tail, blending in that darker green as I go along and I'm picking some of this colour up every so often just to keep the nib a little shade darker and then as that colour runs out you can come into the rest of the tail and blend it in and then for the top part of the tail we're going to use the lightest colour CG1 and I'm just going to blend that in along the rest of the tail. And I'm just going round in little circles to blend this in and if you feel confident you can always use the chisel end to your pen. So that's his tail done. I haven't touched the scales on the back yet because I'm going to leave those till later but I'm going back to the dark green four and I'm going to look at where there would be shadow along the body line. So we'll just go into the creases along the body where the legs are and along there and where his claws are curled over there would be shadow and along the back of the leg. There would also be shadow because his body's curved there would also be some shading along the spine. So we're just going to add that in as well and under the wing. Now once you've done that you can take your middle colour, your dark green too, you can use your palette blending again and you're just going to blend in that line so that it's nice and soft. Now having used your dark green 2, dipped into your dark green 4 and just blended it in along the edge. Once you're happy with the blend, you're then ready to go on to your next colour. So we're going to the lightest colour, 
um, citrus green one, CG1, and I'm going to blend in this area along the top of his, his back, which would be in the curve. So again, I'm just taking little movements and I'm blending in the edges of the colour. And I'm going to continue doing this until all that is blended in as I like it. So now I'm going to work on this under part to his body and again I'm just going to use the, the DG4 and I'm going to look where the shadow would be and it would be where his leg covers the body part. So I'm just going to bring in some of the dark green 4 into that area and on that foot underneath the body and where the claws are curled and around this front hand claw, whatever you call it and on that one and just along the edge of the body line right the way up to the chin which would also be in the shade. So once you've got the shadow in, again using the palette blending and taking some of the ink onto your light, your middle colour, your DG2, you're going to blend that in to get rid of the harsh lines. And you're going to work your way all along that body line. Now once you've got all your palette blended colour in, which in effect gives you a third colour, you're going to continue with the DG2 because now the, the blended colour has run off it. So now you can carry on colouring in the rest of the body in just the DG2 colour. And again, if you feel confident enough, you can use the chisel end and you will cover a lot more area if you do the chisel end. Now just the same as we did along this bit, we're going to do up there and along the face. So I'm using dark green too and I'm just coming in along the edges. And because this is more in the light, I'm not going for the really dark colour. And then once you've got that in, you can go to your palest colour and you can blend all that in so that you have a shaped effect to the back of him. I'm going to use the dark green and I'm just going to add in a little bit more shadow to the face that's inside his ears, that's under his ears, around his eyes and across the nose, inside the nostril and down the little part to his, his right hand side of his face, under his mouth and along this edge, just little marks I'm putting in. And again, round the deepest shadows on the legs and I'm going to use the dark green too to just blend those in again to get rid of the harsh lines. So once you've got your dark green too blended in you're coming back to your palest colour which is CG1 and you're going to blend in the rest of the colours. So the lightest part would be along the top of his head and the ears and around his cheeks. You're just going to blend all that in until you're happy with the blend. Now the last thing I'm going to do are the wings and the spine. The spine along there, all the, the, the notches on his spine, I'm just doing in dark green four. And then I'm going to pick out the darker colour in the wings. 
and add the shadow in so that wing is underneath this top wing so that would be in shade along there and along the spine of the wings would also have a little bit of shading in them so I'm just going to add that in now once you've got that part in take your DG2 and you're just going to blend all that in now I'm just going to turn it round because I need to flick the colour in so that it comes down the wings and because this wing is underneath that one the dark the DG2 would be all the way along that wing now once you've done that you can go to the top wing and add in your color along there blend it in and then flick it in to about two-thirds of the way down and then once you've done that you can finish the wing off with the lightest color and again I'm just going to flick the lightest color into the wing Now because my dragon has his wings spread and he's got his, his little feet all clawed up, he's flying. So I'm going to use the cloud technique with faded jeans and a blender and I'm just going to add in some clouds around my dragon and I'm going to work my way down the paper, putting the cloud effect in a different area and building up the clouds. Now if you don't want to add in the clouds you can cut your dragon out and have him freestanding and on this one I've just added in some little spots to give him a spotted skin or with this one I've added the clouds in, I've cut the shape out and I'm going to add him to my card with some foam pads on the back. So I've gone ahead and matted and layered up different shapes for my card. I've used some of the branches out of the Spellbinders Cherry Blossom and I've just added a little bit of um, cotton there and that is going to have the sentiment look as if it's hanging from that branch. So matting and layering is covered in a video that you can find and I'm just going to do a dry run with all the rest of the elements to my card. So I'm adding in some flowers, both at the top and at the bottom. A little bow will be added in and I'm just seeing where I would like the flowers to be. So there's my finished card and the final bling is um, from Want to Scrap.